Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to explain in detail the workflow that you see in the screen. This is a tutorial for advanced users, so if you're not very familiar with Acme or Python, it might be a better option to start with the tutorials that explain the different modules of Acme individually. First, we're going to start from a smiles string, this one that you see here. And then the program is going to use CSearch with RDK to create conformers. Then it's going to use QPrep to make input files for Gaussian. And afterwards, it's going to run Gaussian to create output log files. And it's going to use QCore using CCLIF to analyze and fix all the errors. This is an iterative process, and at the end, we only have normal intermediate calculations with no issues. Finally, we're going to run good vibes to calculate the distribution of the different conformers obtaining the QM calculations. And in case you don't have this program installed, I'm going to add a link for the GitHub repository in the description of this video. The outcome of this workflow is this comparison between experimental and calculated values. OK, let's go to the Acme repository on GitHub and enter the example workflows folder. Once we are here, we get into the end-to-end -end workflows folder and to the end-to-end -end one confirmation distribution folder. Here, we're going to open the end-to-end -end example one Jupyter notebook. I'm going to open it with Visual Studio Code on my computer. And as you can see, this is an end-to-end -end workflow to calculate conformer proportions of strychnine, which is a natural product. We're going to do it with Acme, starting from Smiles. The first cell is the import cell. And step one, we're going to use C-Search confirmation and sampling to create the SDF files. And we're going to set two variables. First, the name of the molecule. And then, it's a Smiles string. It was easy in this case because strychnine is a natural product and is well known. So you can visit Pagan, for example and just look for the smiles. We're going to copy this isomeric smiles and paste it in Kendra. When we paste it, it shows the structure of the molecule. And this is the molecule that we're going to be using. Then we set up two paths. One is the main folder, which is where the Jupyter notebook is placed, and then the other which is to generate SDF files. In this case, it's the main folder plus strychnine and SDF files. We choose RDKit as the program to generate conformers because the molecule is quite rigid and not many conformers are expected. But CREST is also an option if you prefer to use this tool. Now we define CSearch. This is the working directory, then the destination, where we are going to create the SDF files, the program, which is Ardigit, smiles string, and the name, which is Stegnin. C-Search, we run it, and it only took around 9 seconds. And if you go back to the folders, you can see that the conformers were created in the Stegnin SDF files folder. This SDF file contains all the conformers, in this case, two. And using that file, we're going to move to step two now, in which we write Gaussian input files, starting from the SDF files, obtaining the confirmation sampling. We're going to take all the SDF files that are in the SDF folder, and we are going to generate the new conf files in this conf folder, which is basically the main directory plus the name and conf files. We choose Gaussian as the program, but you can use Orca instead if you prefer. This is the QM input, the memory used, 24 gigabytes, and the number of processors, 12. OK, we're going to set up QPrep using the following options. This is the directory where the SDF files are, destination to create com files, all the SDF files that we selected, Gaussian as the program, QM input with the keywords line, and this is memory and number of processors. Then we run it, and it's very fast. All the conf files are generated in the specified folder, 
And we're going to couple the create and com file with step 3, in which we run these files with Gaussian to perform QM geometry optimizations and frequency calculations. We go to the folder that contains the com files, and we select all the com files as input files. And we're going to run this command, qsub.com, because that's how we run Gaussian jobs in our cluster. But you can use other commands as you prefer, like for example, t16, file.com, file.log. This is totally up to the user. We're going to run it through some process and then we go back to the working directory. After we run Gaussian and you have all the log files ready, we are going to go to step four and run a QCore analysis. The options of QCore are as, are as follows. Here, you specify the main folder where the log files are located. Then, the files are going to be all the log files over here. And we're going to activate the FreckCon filter. This is an option that corrects for cases in which optimization converges, but frequency doesn't. We also define the way to fix it by using this keyword for optimization. I'm going to talk a little bit more about this option in a few minutes. For the isomerization check, we're going to use the initial com files, which are placed in the same folder as the log files, then number of processors and memory. Now we run QCore, and as you can see, it's very fast. We go back to the com files folder that contains both the common log files, and as you can see, QCore divided the outputs to successful and unsuccessful QM outputs. In the unsuccessful folder, we have one of the two conformers inside an error called freq no conf. I'm going to explain a little bit more about this error. We are going to open the log file as text, and then we are going to look for normal. This is where the optimization process ends and where the frequency calculation starts. When we look for converge and search up, you can see how the optimization converge normally with four yeses. And right below the yeses, you can see a message saying that the optimization was completed and a stationary point was found. However, now we search down into the convergence of the frequency calculation. And you can see how, in this case, it didn't converge in maximum displacement. And there is no message saying that a stationary point was found. That's why this calculation didn't pass the QCore analysis, basically. I feel like this is an error that many people, including myself, encounter regularly. But it's difficult to spot and it's often not fixed. Now we go back. We go to a Jupyter Notebook. And basically, we are going to go to step 5 to resubmit the unsuccessful calculations with suggestions for MACME. This new file is in the unsuccessful folder. You can see that there is a folder called fixed QM inputs, and there is a com file that QCore created automatically with an updated input line that tries to fix the convergence issue. Now back to the notebook, we get into the folder with the com file over here, and we select all the com files to run just in case there are multiple files. And we run these files with Gaussian, with QSAP as before, but again, you can choose the command line that you prefer, such as g16, file.com, file.log. Now again, we through some process, and we go back to the working directory. We're going to go to step 6, where we analyze the new Gaussian output with QCore as before. We select all the log files that have been resubmitted. Then QCore with the same options as before, working directory, log files, applying frequency convergence filters, which you can disable at any point. If you want to skip this filter, just remove this option, and the program will look for a kind of convergence issue. However, Gaussian recommends fixing this issue, so that's what I normally do. The description of this video includes a link to the Gaussian FAQ webpage in case you are interested in this.
this is the summarization filter using com files. Com files are in the same folder as the log files, number of processors, and memory. Then after running QCAR, all the successful log files are going to be placed in the successful QM outputs folder. The opt files variable corresponds to the log files. We're going to go back to the folders to see it. We get to the successful QM outputs folder. And there are two conformers of Stigning that pass all the QCore tests. You can see that QCore also generated an additional folder with JSON files. These files contain all the information generated by the CCLib library. So you can use these files to store QM descriptors such as charges and use them in machine learning studies, for example or you can just upload them to storage repositories. Additionally, a full check analysis was done. When we open it, you can see how not all the calculations were done with the same options. For example, in this section, you can see how two different versions of Gaussian were used. In this case, what happens is that the admin of the cluster updated the Gaussian version from B01 to C01, and we were not aware of this. But we spotted this issue with the full check analysis. All the other options, such as grid type, solvation model, dispersion, etc., were consistent amongst the different calculations. Then, going back to the code, we're going to run the final step, which is the calculation of thermochemistry and Conformer distribution using good vibes. I select the successful folder, which contains all the successful log files. And now, for simplicity, we're going to create an infolder called good vibes analysis in the main directory. And we are going to copy all the log files there. Then I'm going to go to the new folder and run good vibes through sub process. In this case, including only two options. First, the Boltz option, which calculates the Boltzmann distribution of each conformer, and the XYZ option, which creates an XYZ file that contains all the molecular coordinates. We run good vibes, and we are going to check the good vibes analysis folder. We go back to the working directory, and we will get into the good vibes analysis folder. This stat file contains all the data from good vibes. Another advantage of this kind of automated workflow is the transparency of the method. For example, from the requested keywords, here I can see that this thermal data was obtained in gas phase, but the correct input line for good vibes should contain dash C1 to use a standard concentration of one molar when solvents are used. Since in this case the resulting Boltzmann distributions of the two conformers are the same, I use this command line just as an example of error spotting in transparent workflows. You can see that the data from good vibes contains all the raw information that is normally included in supporting information documents. Actually, while working with Robert Payton, we uploaded the raw data files from good vibes as separate documents in the ESIs. This is a way that we think avoids the creation of huge tables in the main ESI document, which might also contain human errors during data manipulation. Additionally, good vibes creates an XYZ file that contains all the molecular coordinates. These are the coordinates of the first conformer, and this section corresponds to the other conformer. Again, we normally upload this XYZ file independently to the support information, since this reduces the length of the main ESI document and avoids human errors during data manipulation. So you can see here how the results are printed, showing a population of 98.6% for conformer 1 and 1.4% for conformer 2. We compare the computational results with experimental data from the article called Hidden Flexibility of Strickning by John and Ritchie. And these are the results. Experimentally, they observe 97.3% of one conformer, 
and 2.7% of the other. And the results are quite similar to the predicted values obtained with the ACME workflow, in which the user only had to run a Jupyter notebook with no extra manual work required. Just to sum up, we started from a smash string, which is a very simple input that can be obtained from PubChem or generated quickly in Kendra. Then we use CSearch using RDKit and you perform a confirmation sampling that generates the files. Afterwards, we use QPrep to prepare input files for Gaussian to generate log files. This is an automated process that combines generation of conf files under submission. Then we analyze the results with QCore using the CCL library. Conformer 2 presented a convergence issue that was automatically fixed. And then we ended up with the final process log files. And we use good vibes to calculate the conformer distribution and thermochemistry to obtain the final output that you can see here. That was it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or if you want to implement any new workflows or software, please feel free to send us an email or just open an issue on GitHub.